All right, we're doing a quick status update. Um, it is November um, 22nd. Um, and we're just going to recap some progress. So today is Alice's birthday. Uh, so just to recap, you know, what is Alice, right? So Alice is our context aware polygrupo maintainer. Um, she's an entity described via the open architecture, and it's the nickname. Um, so it's, it's the entity and the architecture, right? So it's a nickname. We give this data, uh, data-centric fail-safe architecture for our federal general intelligence. Um, and in this context, we say that failing safe also means failing secure. So just to recap, the open architecture is a methodology for secure and transparent collaboration between AGI instances in the polyrepo environment, right? So this means that we're going to be collaborating across projects um, uh, in a setting where we have multiple maintainers, right? So with different instances, each instance may have different permissions model. Um, and so you have to communicate across repos and collaborate across repos in much the same way that we do as regular developers. Um, but you want, of course, the AI to do that, right? So the core of this is really around the, the bombs or what's in the software, right? So as we look at each repo, you know, what, how, do, how are the dependencies related across repos? You know, what are the events that we care about? And then, um, you know, the understanding of, you know, what is the operating context for the given entity, right? Um, and so when we put all that stuff together, um, we combine it with things like block, which is the graph uh, for our understanding artifact composition. Um, then we're going to create this like holistic view of you know what does our or what does each entity care about for its given role. Um, so the software analysis trinity has evolved into the entity analysis trinity, right? Um, as we start to look at these different entities um, and like the large language models or whatever that we're going to throw in there. Um, and so basically we've got three three pieces of this. You know, what's the intent as it's defined by the architectural threat model? Um, what does the staff analysis say? So what does the code when it's in there not doing anything say? And then what does the behavioral analysis say or the dynamic analysis, right? And so what is the when it's running, right? So that's happening in your CI, CD, your telemetry. And we're trying to figure out, you know, is this doing, uh, is, the, is this piece of software doing what we think it's doing or what we want it to do, right? So, so uh, the focus of what we've been doing recently is really around data collection um, and enabling kind of this, um, you know, the, the, the collection throughout this loop, right, at the various stages. Um, and if you'll recall in the last status update, what we did was we were mostly focused on, on static analysis, right? So now we're moving into the behavioral analysis or dynamic analysis. Um, and to get that information, we really need to um, figure out how to enable the AI to have all the same information that we do, right? So uh, we want to make sure that it understands, you know, where's the source code? Um, how does it get access to the source code? Uh, when does when are there updates, right? So if somebody's working on a, a pull request or you know an issue thread, it's like how do we make sure that it has that most updated information? And then how does it have the information about you know if it submits a pull request or is debugging or looking at somebody else's logs? You know how does it read the CSD logs and so forth, right? So having this information allows us to uh, you know work side by side just as we would with any other developer. So a key piece of this is federation. And if you've been looking at some of the stuff that's been going on, it's like Activity Pub, Blue Sky, and all this stuff, um, that's kind of a thing that happened when people started moving away from Twitter, uh, really kind of took off. It's a, a lot of these protocols predate that. But um, effectively, what federation uh, is as a concept is we have separate services, right, or separate instances that are controlled, um, you know, by different owners, and then you have multiple actors or users that each, um, you know, have a presence on that server. And then services talk, you know, service to service communication, and protocols like ActivityPub define that spec, um, which enables that service to service communication. So the way that we're going to leverage this is SKIT, um, which is an ITF um, spec that's evolving has a, a section for federation. Um, and what SCID is going to let us do is, is put trusted statements into this append-only log, right? And so we're going to basically take our, our federated forge environment, which is really just like, you know, our self-hosted VCS, um, and we're going to relay those those statements um, from each entity um, that, you know, might be a part of this network um, working in this polyrepo environment. And we're going to create statements for that. And so once we have that statement, we know that we can trust, you know, whatever that event is, and we can verify it independently offline. So if we're doing automatic builds or offline builds, uh, we still have all that information, right? And we know that we can trust that event happened. Um, so another thing that we're going to be looking at is, is label property graphs um, and content addressable ontologies with those label property graphs. Um, so that things don't kind of move underneath us if, if we're dereferencing, you know, what is the, the data that's, that's in that graph. Um, and so basically this is this is going to be very similar to the stuff that we were doing with data flows and the existing, you know, open architecture style representation. Um, 
of you know what is uh, you know like what is the execution flow on the poly engine right um, so basically you know we're just going to traverse the graph like we were doing before um, only there's going to be kind of a, a more um, well-defined way that the different um, instances can understand each other's policy right? uh, let's see so uh, yeah one of the key principles of this is really that different instances may have different um, admission control or really like different policy that, that their policy engine is evaluating against and um, so, you know, one forge, um, you know, may not think that some event is valid, right? So maybe they have a different threshold for um, you know, number of vulnerabilities allowed in a dependency, um, and then a different forge, right? And that would determine what kind of, what kind of jobs get allowed to run, you know, within that uh, within that, that context. Um, so, all right, so this is kind of what it looks like at a glance. Um, we see, you know, Bob's dancing. Bob's instance here, analysis instance here, and we see you know, the, the the version control server. So this is maybe like Git T or your. Um, I think this they have a fork go, um, which is a fork of Git T that does some federated stuff. Um, and and this is kind of like if you're familiar with GitLab, right? So it's kind of like a self-hosted alternative. These are all self-hosted sort of uh, GitHub clones, if you will. Um, and so basically, we're going to relay those those web events of everything that's happening into the federated event space, and then that's going to give us you know the the, the trust that we need and the eventing that we need to, to do this online collaboration. And here's a little demo. So basically what we see here is um, Bob's instance here. Um, we're going to hook up the webhook um, to Bob's instance, Alice follows Bob. So there's two skit servers in the top left is Alice and the bottom right is Bob. And then we're going to go ahead and push a commit um, up to up to the so to what is now GitHub, and we see that the, the webhook, uh, there's like this webhook notary um, that gets added on there. Um, and so basically, anything that gets submitted as a webhook event turns into a notarized statement, and then um, the, the federation that's taking place between these instances is going to allow us to retrieve the claim that was submitted um, to Bob's instance via this notary that's embedded in this instance um, from Alice's instance here, right? So this is how we might, um, uh, like so for, for the the, the OpenSSS F, S2C2F, um, if you were doing like ING4 and you want to mirror source code into a trusted environment, this might be how you could evaluate, um, you know, a, 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 a new poll from a mirror um, if you wanted to make sure that that mirror didn't have any CDs in or, or something before you pulled in, right? And so then the analysis forge could make sure that she's never mirroring in any code that has known CDs, right? Um, so, so she only updates her opinion effectively by, by only pushing new, uh, so you, you basically she's doing a fetch and she's doing a push, right? And she's only going to do that fetch and push if there's no CDs, right? And so that'd be something that her policy engine would make a determination of when she receives um, the federated event from Bob, right? So basically what we did here is, is Bob's webhook notary, um, it went and it hashed the, the tarball that's associated with that commit, right? So if you're just doing git archive, that's basically what GitHub does, and we grabbed the, um, you know, we grabbed that archive, we figured out what the SHA-384 hash is, and then we're going to pull out that, that down that signed statement from Alice's instance, and then we're look, just looking here, and we're seeing that, you know, that hash is the same um, as what was submitted within the claim, right? So, yeah, that's uh, that's basically where we're at there. Um, so, with this demo, it doesn't actually show the, the policy, um, but, you know, what, what, what you might remember from the last progress update is that we're working on the stack analysis portion, right? So, we might run the should I flows. Um, and do the, the policy evaluation there. Um, so some stuff that has happened since the last status update was, um, we, you know, we got some registration policy support implemented within the SCID emulator, um, and we also got some workload-based authentication support uh, implemented within the SCID emulator, so it'll just like help us submit statements um, from you know, various like ODC-protected workloads. And then um, also this Federation PR, uh, we presented, uh, we did a little demo at the, um, the SCID meeting in IT118. Um, so this is like, you can play with it right now, and there's an unstable instance, um, but it's, it's not merged yet, and there's no, um, there's no, no, it's not in the architecture doc, right? So there's nothing in the architecture doc in that section right now, but this forms the basis for like, you know, uh, what we might put in there right now that we've played with this. Uh, we're also thinking we, we probably need some, like, various mechanisms for federation that service could to declare it supports for, because different um, protocols, or different federation different federation protocols might have different, um, like, uh, security properties associated with them, right? So, so activity buzz is fairly open. Um, we're also looking at, like, the wire has a federation protocol. Um, there's a few others. So, 
And all of this is, of course, feeding into that stream of consciousness doc, right? Because we need that event stream to, to basically simulate, you know, what becomes the stream of consciousness there. So, once again, we're filling out the entity analysis trinity, trinity feeding, the, feeding all the data into the giant event loop. And now we're kind of approaching that, that dynamic analysis portion here. So, contributing, brainstorming, Google Doc, and programming to the code. Thank you very much.